Patients treated with megrolimab and azacitidine include both high-risk myelodysplastic syndrome patients and patients that are treatment-naive acute myeloid leukemia. We have previously treated a small cohort of patients with relapse refractory disease, but there was relatively low activity, and really preclinical models further suggested that combining the therapy together would be optimal, where a combination of these two agents had significantly improved survival in mice models versus um, either single agent alone. So we had 46 patients that were response valuable at our data cutoff, meaning that they had at least one bone marrow response. Patients do get bone marrows every two cycles. In the MDS patient population specifically, we had over 90% of patients achieving a response, with 50% of patients achieving a complete remission as defined by IWG criteria. Importantly, three quarters of the cohort did have improved hematopoiesis, meaning either transfusion independence or objective HI, with only several responses having marrow remissions alone. In our AML cohort, over 60% of patients had a response with a 55% composite CR and CRI rate. Importantly, again, the majority of patients that were transfusion dependent at baseline achieved transfusion independence. As far as the depth of remission, we see both by cytogenetic responses as well as MRD assays as defined by multi-parameter flow cytometry that a significant proportion of patients are having deep remissions. Importantly, these responses are occurring faster. Median time to response was 1.9 months in both cohorts. And as far as potential subgroups that may better respond, patients do have sequencing done at baseline. And given early activity in P53 mutant AML, we actually preferentially change the AML cohort to only enroll P53 mutant patients. And although it's a small subset, over 70% of patients achieved either a CR or CRI in the P53 mutant AML subgroup. Other than that, we appear to see responses independent of molecular subgroups, which is very encouraging for this combination. So as far as the safety profile of megrolimab, it is overall very well tolerated. We know that the only normal cells that express CD47, again, the target of megrolimab, are old red blood cells. And this is our body's normal way of clearing them. So patients that get megrolimab can have a first dose anemia, and we try to mitigate that with this priming strategy. Again, they get this one milligram per kilo on day one. We overall see a mean hemoglobin drop of about a half a gram per deciliter, although there can be an increased range. So for safety, we typically transfuse patients at a higher number than we would historically, maybe between 8.5 and 9 grams per deciliter through cycle one. But importantly, after the initial cycle, patients' hemoglobin significantly improved. This correlates with response, and we do not see any recurrent anemia issues from that perspective. As far as other side effects, some patients have fatigue. We do see mild transaminitis. But importantly, if we look at all patients dose to date, which is over 60 patients, we've only had one patient discontinued for an adverse event. This was a significant infusion-related reaction. The patient did have complete resolution of the symptoms, but that patient was discontinued. So given the very high response rates, particularly in myelodysplastic syndrome patients, and the fact that at this point, we really have a historical baseline treatment of azacitidine or decidabine, which patients only achieve approximately 20% complete remission rate, we feel that that's the biggest unmet need. And so currently there is a significant expansion of the frontline high-risk MDS cohort with the goal of improving complete remission rate. And potentially we could think about regulatory pathways from that perspective. I think additionally, given the high percentage of response in the P53 mutant AML subset specifically, and the fact that even novel agents such as venetoclax have overall poor responses and poor durability of response, I think we are also expanding that group at this time to see if we can improve those patients' outcomes as well.